G'day, welcome back to the channel. I hope I've got an interesting video for you today because who wouldn't want a jetpack of their very own? Something you can strap on your back and fly around like a bird, like a missile. Wouldn't that be fantastic? In fact, it's been a dream of people for a long, long time. I think the original jetpacks were the ones that Bell Labs, I think it was Bell, made back in the 60s. And they were used hydrogen peroxide and a catalyst. And I think even on the series, the original series, Lost in Space, the TV show, they used that. That was the one that James Bond used as Thunderball, the, the movie. So these jetpacks have been around for a while, but the original ones with the hydrogen peroxide, uh, you get about 20, 30 seconds of, of flight time, which is really not really good at all. Uh, and then I think there was a turbine version that was made for a while and that eventually morphed into what they called the, the X-Jet. Believe it or not, there's a thing called the X-Jet, which is a flying platform with a jet motor. Yeah, that was back in the 70s, I think. But anyway, now you can buy your very own jetpack and it's not expensive, I've got to say. And it comes as a result of the fact that here in New Zealand, we had a company called Martin Jetpack. There was a guy called Glenn Martin. He was a pharmacist. He came up with this idea of making a jetpack and making it commercially available. And he talked to a few people and he was well connected. And the New Zealand government threw $900,000 of taxpayers' money. That's money I pay for my taxes. Threw, threw nearly a million dollars of taxpayers' money at him and said, go ahead, make it happen. And right from the get-go, I was very sceptical. Now, in 2008, Glenn Martin and his, uh, his accomplices went to the Oshkosh Air Show and they debuted the Martin Jetpack and it took the media by storm. The media was overwhelmed. Look at this, the future of aviation, a jetpack. You can strap it on your back and fly around. Not quite what happened. It was a pretty primitive device and it was so unstable it had to have people holding onto the sides so it didn't tip over. But it was, it was a concept. It was a proof of concept. This thing could fly. And with all the money coming in because he had the government funding and then some venture capitalists came in and said, Whoa, it was pretty well received at Oshkosh. Have some more money, have some more money. So people were throwing money at the Martin Jetpack Company, which was then going to produce these jetpacks. There were a lot of claims made for these things. They were going to revolutionize commuting. Instead of having to drive an hour through busy city traffic every day to go from your home to your office, you could just jump in your jetpack, fly to your office, couple of minutes, do your work, fly home. Fantastic. No more urban, no more commuter struggle. Um, it was, yeah, there was a lot of hype. There was a lot of sizzle around this product. And I've been writing a technology column for over 26 years now. Every day I write this little column. It's a blog these days. When I started, it wasn't a blog because there was no such things as blogs. But I started this and right from the get go, when I saw the Martin Jetpack, I said, this is never going to be a commercially viable product and for a number of reasons. Uh, which I listed at the time. And one of the key reasons that I listed was because it's not new. It's, it's been done before and failed. In fact, if you do some research, I'll put links down here in the description a bit, so you can go and have a look for yourself. But there was a thing called the Solo Trek VFX, and that was exactly the same concept. Two ducted fans, an internal combustion engine, and you stood in it and had some controls. That was tried in 2001. I think DARPA threw millions of dollars millions of dollars at developing the solo trek device and it failed it failed for the same reasons that the martin jetpack was going to fail that is it's just not a very practical concept um, there, for example the failure mode if the motor stops that's it you're over unless you're flying at a really high altitude so you've got time to deploy a, a parachute you're dead and if you land on someone below they're dead too so it wasn't a particularly safe device at least with the helicopter You've got a chance of survival, you can auto-rotate if you have an engine failure, but with the jetpack it becomes a small windowless building with you inside as it plunges towards the ground. So, And also the powder weight ratios and the efficiencies just weren't there. When the Martin jetpack was originally announced it was going to have massive range and endurance and so forth and it looked like a fantastic device. As the years went on and they discovered the realities of the problems with this concept, the range got shorter, the endurance got less, the payload capacity got lower because it just was never going to deliver on the promises. So eventually the company folded. It folded, it liquidated. Now all the assets of the company have been put online for you to potentially buy. And in fact, when I checked this morning, one of the original Martin Jetpack prototypes only had $36,000 listing. It was, it was the bids had only gone up to $36,000, which is about 24 grand US, I think. So if you wanted to buy an original Martin jetpack, sit it in the corner of the living room as a talking piece, 
there's your opportunity. <laughs> um, but that, that's probably the least interesting thing in the whole auction. There are there are lots of stuff. There's there's lots of radio control model servos, high torque, high tech servos, metal geared servos, digital servos. They're going for pretty low prices compared to the the original purchase value. There's some volts servos now. Anyone that's been working in the drone, the UAS industry, will know that volts servos are very highly regarded. They're metal case, metal geared, high torque, high precision. Um, some of them are going for two dollars each. Two dollars for a volt servo, that is ridiculous. If I had any spare change I'd probably buy those up and then put them on eBay where you'd probably quadruple or even ten times your money because volt servo, if you look online to get a price for volt servos all you'll get is apply for pricing, ask for a quote because if you have to ask you can't afford them, they're that expensive. And these things are going for a song. The other stuff that's listed on the auction is actually quite revealing because Martin claimed they'd developed this fantastic new internal combustion engine that was going to have wonderful performance, wonderful fuel efficiency, all these wonderful claims that made the concept of the twin ducted fans with the internal combustion engine actually viable. But if you look at it, it looks like they got a whole lot of uh, Honda CR500 cylinders, stuck them on a crankcase with reed blocks and pistons con rods. It basically it was built out of CR500 parts. So it wasn't a revolutionary new engine, it was just an engine built of off-the-shelf parts. And that's one of the reasons they couldn't achieve the performance goals that they'd claimed because it was just an engine. And if you look at it, when you've got such a small engine producing the huge amount of horsepower required to run those fans fast enough to give you lift, the lifespan of that engine is going to be pretty short. High maintenance, high maintenance, you know, short maintenance, maintenance intervals, high levels of wear. And a two-stroke, it's never going to be fuel efficient if it's a two-stroke. Two-strokes, they just can't produce fuel efficient two-strokes in that size with that engine performance. So it was never going to deliver. And a lot of people lost their shirts. A lot of people lost their shirts with Martin Jetpack. I, I, I sort of chronicled the evolution of this venture over the years. And if people are interested, I can give you some more insight into that in a future video because one morning I was working away, I was actually writing my daily technology column and I got a call, it was Glenn Martin from Martin Jetpack, this was in the early days, and he was calling me because they wanted to test the jetpack at higher than knee height altitudes and they weren't prepared to put someone in it, they wanted to fly it remotely in case something went wrong, sensible move. And he rang me and said, can you tell me something about these radio control systems, what's the range, you know, what's the best ones, all that sort of stuff. And so we had a good long discussion and I told him you know, what I thought would be best for the thing. And um, at that stage I discovered that they weren't using any kind of flight controller on this thing. It was basically all pilot skill flying it. I was quite amazed that they hadn't thought of using a flight controller so that they'd make it like a, a quadcopter and in self-leveling mode so it would just sit there stably until the pilot disturbed it. They were had the pilot constantly fighting the controls which is why the demonstration at Oshkosh required two people to hold the thing from falling over. Simple things like that gave me insight into the fact that this was someone who had an idea but no real understanding of how they were going to implement it. And ultimately the whole thing as they fell apart in the future. I'll give you, I'll go through the chronicle, chronicles I wrote of how this thing was a, a perfect case a uh, study case of how startups can go wrong and how that can really really screw people at the exit stage of the whole venture. Anyway I'll do that later if you need to but in the meantime go and have a look. I'll put some links down here for you to look at the solo trek, what, what the first iteration of this was and why it failed and also at the Martin Jetpack itself and the auction, the auction where you can go and buy this stuff now for giveaway prices uh, if you really are interested. The auction's closed soon so don't delay, go and do it now. I'm not making any money, this is no affiliate links down here, this is all just informational stuff and I hope you find it interesting. Um, as I say I'll give you some more background if you want it into the the evolution of this, this what turned out to be ultimate disaster and as I said at the beginning it will never fly figuratively or literally and that turned out to be the case. Anyway thanks for watching, just a little bit of an info video today. Thanks to my Patreon supporters, you make it possible for me to make these videos. Bye for now.